Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things bolt action. Today's video is going to be another beginner's guide, but rather than focusing on a unit or a faction, instead I'm going to be telling you my recommended starter army box sets for each of the major factions in bolt action. I wanted to make this video because I know that there are a lot of new people that are getting into the game for the first time, but it can be really difficult to know where to start. What box set should you pick up? Which starter army is better? Should I go for the Winter Soviets or the Summer Soviets? Should I go for the German Grenadiers or the Bolshemjäger box set? It can be really hard to know out of all of the fantastic armies and box sets that Warlord Games create, which one is best for if you're getting into the game for the first time and if you're looking at picking up a particular faction. But never fear, Morian Glory is here and hopefully by the end of today's video, you will have a good idea of what kind of starter army you want to get your hands on and which faction is the right one for you. And so without further ado, let us dive right into today's episode. So the first thing that I want to do is lay down some considerations, some criteria for what I believe makes a good starter army. The number one thing we're going to be taking into account is bang for buck. Are you getting a good deal? This for me is the most important one, especially when we're talking about beginners, because you might not have actually played bot action yet. You might have watched some videos on it, you might have watched some of my videos, or you've been watching lots of battle reports, and you think you like the game, but you just don't know yet. The worst thing that ha can happen is you end up spending loads of money on a game system that ultimately isn't for you. And you feel really badly burned, and it just feels like a big sour taste in your mouth. What we want is a beginner starter army that will allow you to dip your toes into the water, have fun with it, and if you enjoy it, it's a great jumping off point and you can start expanding your army. And if it's not for you, then you've not wasted a lot of time and money. The next thing we're keeping in mind is utility. We want a starter army that's going to come with a wide variety of units that will allow us to build lots of different fun and exciting army lists. We don't want to get too pigeonholed if we can avoid it. And last but certainly not least, we want to make sure that we're picking a starter army that's going to give us a good idea of how the army plays. It's going to give us a good feel for the faction. We're going to be able to pick up the vibe. We're going to be able to marinate in it and we'll be able to understand how this particular army likes to play. But with all of that said, let's now get into the main meaty part of the video and we will begin, of course, as is only right, with the armies of Great Britain. Now, if you've watched my beginner's guide to the British in action, you might be expecting me to recommend something like the 8th Army box set or the British Paratrooper Starter Army, but I'm actually going to go for something a little bit different. Since I record those videos, Warlord Games has released a new Starter Army for the British, and I personally think it is the best starter set that they sell for any faction for the whole of bot action. I'm talking about the Commando Starter Army. This box set comes with all of the infantry you would need. 36 hard plastic commandos. That's more than enough to get all the veterans you could possibly want for your British force. It then comes with support teams and metal officers. And importantly, it comes with things like the medium mortar, which is basically an auto include for any bolt action force. But on top of this, something that really makes it step ahead of both the cheaper airborne army and also the more expensive 8th army is it comes with a tank. It comes with a Centaur support tank. The Centaur isn't the best tank in the world, but it's perfectly okay. It's absolutely fine. You can use that vehicle to get a good feel for how vehicles work in the action, for how tanks operate in the game. So for me, it's a no-brainer. British Inter-Allied Commando Starter Army is definitely the one I would recommend for any new player who is thinking of getting into the armies of Great Britain. Moving on to our next allied faction, we have the United States. 
Now, the US is a tricky one because you do have the US Army starter set and you do have the Marine starter set. And these do have some benefits. You have the Army one comes with a Sherman and it comes with a half track, which is great. Getting a transport and getting a main tank it means you've got lots of vehicles that you can play around with. But the problem with both of these sets is that they're quite expensive. They actually are about £106 if you get them from Warlord. And that's still a great deal in comparison to some other war games that you can collect where you might spend £95 and barely even get enough to start playing the game. So it's still a full army. It's still a good deal. But the problem that I find with those starter sets, with both of those for the Americans, is they come with lots of MMGs. Now, yes, one of the American faction traits is they can take more machine guns, but medium machine guns aren't very good. In fact, they're often considered one of the weaker parts, rules-wise, of the starter sets. Typically, people take them, they include them, but the moment that they can swap them out for something like a light howitzer, they're going to do that. The, that so the, I don't, I can't recommend them because for a full price starter army, you really shouldn't be having any disadvantages with it. Instead, I would recommend the US Airborne Starter Army. Now, this comes in at £59, so it's essentially the American equivalent of the British Power Army. And it comes with 36 US Airborne Infantry, it comes with four Airborne HQ figures, and it comes with one, two, three weapon teams. A heavy machine gun, a medium mortar, and an anti-tank gun, all of which are amazing. HMGs can do great soft anti-tank, they're also good anti-veteran, medium mortar, auto include in every army, and having a proper good bit of anti-tank in there is great. If you really wanted to have a tank with your starter force, what I would honestly recommend you do is you buy this US Airborne starter force and then just buy a plastic Sherman. It'll be 20 odd pounds and it'll still come in cheaper than if you bought one of the official American starter sets, but it'll actually be infinitely more useful and you're not going to get a bunch of MMGs that you don't actually want because there's a big difference between MMG teams and HMG teams. And finally, we have the last major faction of the Allies, the Soviet Union. Now, the Red Army has a number of starter sets you can go for. But the one that I'm going to recommend is the new one that Warlord Games has recently put out, which is the Soviet Army 1940 to 1943 Starter Army. The reason I like this one is because it comes with everything that you need to collect Soviets, but it's also a little bit cheaper. With the Winter Starter Army, you're looking at something like £116. And yes, it comes with a hell of a lot. Let's not beat around the bush. It, you get what you pay for. You get 80 infantry. That's double that you get with any other starter set. You get a heavy tank. You get all the support teams, all the officers. It is a very, very good starter set. But asking someone to spend £116 right off the bat kind of goes back to those considerations we were talking about at the beginning of the video. It's a lot to ask someone, especially if they're not certain they're going to like the kit or if they're going to like the game. So I would recommend the Soviet Army 1940 to 43 because it's the cheapest out of all of the Red Army starter sets. And you still get so much. It is still a fantastic deal. You get so much bang for buck. Not only are you still getting over 60 of the plastic infantry, you're also getting all of the metal officers that you need, commissar, officer, medic. You're getting a medium machine gun team, which is okay. But what's really interesting is you're getting a 45 millimeter anti-tank gun, which is nice. Um, I've not actually seen a lot of star sets include a light anti-tank gun. So that's nice, it's quirky, it's a little bit different. But of course, you also get a T-34. And if you're going to collect Soviets, you want the D-34. It is the iconic tank of the faction. So it's really good. You get more than enough infantry to build everything that you might need. Uh, you get a good tank. You get some decent weapon teams. The only downside of this army is it doesn't come with a medium mortar. And if you are willing to spend a little bit more, you could go for the regular Soviet army starter set, the one that costs about £106. And that one does come with a T-34, comes with a late war T-34, the 85 model. 
and it comes with the medium water as well. But if you're getting into service the first time, you just want to dip your toe and you want to feel if the Red Army is for you, I recommend 1940 to 43 because it's still a great jumping off point. And you could always just buy a medium water afterwards and it, it wouldn't cost you very much at all. But that covers all of the allies. Let's now move on to the Axis. And we have to begin with the arguably most popular faction in all of bot action. It is the Germans. Now, for the Germans, I actually have two starter armies that I would recommend. Firstly, the Africa Core starter army. This one is going to come with 36 plastic infantry, which is more than enough for you to get three big squads, anti-tank rifle team, officer, and you have a couple of guys left over for whatever you might want to do. Also comes with some uh, support teams, such as the medium mortar, which is, as always, an auto include, and also comes with a medium machine gun. And interestingly, this medium machine gun is an MG34 team. Now, rules-wise, it doesn't mean anything, but aesthetically, you tend to find with a lot of the German starter armies, and there are a lot of them, but they come with an MG42. So I found it really cool that it's got an MG34 instead. But, like I said, it's just aesthetics. It makes no difference for the rules. You then have the absolute beast, which is the Flak 88, which can be used as a big anti-tank gun or a medium howitzer. Very flexible. And you have my favourite tank in all of bolt action for the Germans, which is the Panzer III. Incredibly flexible, can be used from early war all the way through to late war. It will always be a viable part of your collection. It's also a relatively affordable starter army, costing about the same as the Soviet one at 89 quid from World of Games. So it's still a little bit more expensive than, let's say, the American starter army with the, with the airborne and with the commandos for the British, but it's still very much one of, uh, one of the cheaper ones. The only issue with the Africa Corps set is it very much is mid-war. And the reason this is a problem is because it means you're going to miss out on some vital bits of equipment, such as the assault rifles, the STG-44s, and also the Panzerfaust, two bits of equipment which Germans really do like, especially when you get to the late war. They very much supplement your army and allow you to have quite an edge on the battlefield. So the only issue with the Africa Corps starter army is if you do end up getting into the game, there's a good chance you're going to want to buy an extra box of infantry so you can access those really quite vital bits of equipment. This is where my second starter army for the Germans comes in. It is a little bit more expensive. It's about £17 more than the Africa Corps one. It's the German Grenadier starter set. And frankly... If I was to recommend a starter army for everyone in the game, not just beginners, but veterans as well, people that really are looking to get into the Germans in the most effective way possible, I would recommend the German Grenadier Starter Army. It not only comes with plenty of plastic infantry that's going to allow you to build up all of the assault rifles, SMGs, LMGs, Panzerfaust, it's got a, a really solid core plastic infantry. It's also coming with the MG42 team, which is iconic, and you get the medium mortar, and you get a heavy anti-tank gun, which is very good, and you get two vehicles. And what's really important about these two vehicles is one is the Puma, which goes in the armoured car slot, and one is the Stug, which goes in the tank slot of your reinforced platoon. The reason this starter army is so effective is because every last little bit of it is good having an armored car and a tank in a starter set is quite rare you do have other starter armies out there that will come with two vehicles but often one's like a transport and the other one's like a basic tank or if you look at the ss starter set that does come with like a tiger and a stug but you can't use both of those in a standard 1000.1 reinforced platoon game so if you are looking to spend a little bit more money and you want to have an army which is almost completely self-contained, wouldn't need any additional purchases and is going to be very effective representing those late war Germans, you would probably be best going for that Grenadier starter army. Moving on, we have our next Axis faction and it is the Japanese. Now this is a very easy part of the video for me because they've only got one starter army. 
unfortunately, it's a good one as well. If it hadn't been very good, I probably would have ended up suggesting a combination of units that I would go for. But the Imperial Japanese Starter Army is very good. Not only does it come with plenty of plastic infantry, 48 of them, which is pretty good considering that unless you're going Soviets, most of these sets we've looked at have only got 36. So 48 is fantastic because the Japanese are very much an infantry-based army, so having more infantry is really, really good. It definitely pushes people to understand that faction. It's one of those considerations that we want to take into account, the feel of it. When you open your Japanese army, you're going to be like, right, yeah, I've got more infantry than my American counterpart. There's a good reason for that. I want to be banzaiing people. It also comes with a metal officer, which is great, and it comes with a medium mortar. If I had to say it's not to include again, some people are going to be uh, going to be like, change the record, morning. I can't help it. Medium ones are really good. And it comes with the medium machine gun team, which is whatever. It's fine. And then you have the plastic type 97 Chiha medium tank, which is brilliant because not only can it be built as the type 97 Chiha, it can also be built as the Kai Shinto, which is the equivalent of a Panzer III tank. So it comes with all the different things you might need. The Chiha fantastic platform a tank that a lot of japanese players end up using for a long time you can either have that medium anti tank gun to give you that bit of extra punch which as you might see you don't have a huge amount of other anti tank in your army so having that medium anti tank gun on the kai shinto is great or you can go for the howard so if you decide to deal with tanks with lunge mines and stuff like that either way I have personally built many of the Japanese infantry. It's a very good kit. It comes with SMGs, LMGs. It comes with anti-tank stuff. It comes with office stuff. It comes with everything you need to make any kind of infantry for your army. So the fact that you're getting 48 of them really, really does give you a lot of flexibility with this set. And last and sadly, probably least, we do have Italy. Now, let me say something straight off the bat. Italy, from a rules point of view, is not a particularly good faction. They're kind of seen as barely a major, somewhere between a major and a minor faction. But they do have some of the best models that Warlord Games has produced. They have the latest plastic kits, which come with a huge amount of extra detail and quality of life improvements. I recently did a video where I unboxed and built some Italian Alpini and I was blown away by the ergonomics of the sculpt and the kit and just of about how easy and fun it was to build them. So from a painting and modeling point of view, the Italians are fantastic. And I hope one day they do get some army rules that actually buff them because they are one of the few factions where the army rules can actually debuff them, which is hilarious. But let me just say one last thing. I've never met an Italian player who wasn't having fun, even if they were losing. So they are a really, really enjoyable faction to play. They're very flavorful. They're just unfortunately not very powerful. But let's now take a look at starter armies themselves. You have two, and it's kind of hard to pick between them. You've got the Bersagliari starter set, and you've got the Italian army in black shirts. On the surface, they look very similar, but there are some key differences. They both come with 36 plastic infantry. They both come with three heavy weapon teams. They both come with a tank. Now, let's start off with that tank. It can be built as either a Semavente assault gun or it can be built as a M13 slash 40 medium tank. Now, this is where what I was saying before about quality of life and really good kits comes in because this is one of the few tanks you can get with bot action where it can swap between a assault gun and a medium tank effortlessly. The way the kit has been designed, you literally just pop one top off and just put the next one on. It's really, really good. So you're genuinely getting two for one on the armor front, which is fantastic. Going over to the medium uh, weapon teams, to the weapon teams, you get the, a medium machine gun, you get a medium mortar in both. But if you're going for the Bersagliari, you get a flak gun, you get an auto cannon. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that's some sort of specialized AA weapon. It's not. Auto cannons are very, very powerful in bot action. And the moment you start hosing down any infantry or light vehicles of that, they're going to have a bad time. The other set, the Italian Army and Black Shirts, just comes with some straight up extra anti tank. It comes with a light AT gun. If I was to pick between the two, 
I would probably recommend from a maybe from a bang for buck point of view, I'd probably recommend the Bersagliari. Firstly, it's important to note that most of the Bersagliari can be taken as veterans in your Italian force. So if you compare that to the Italian black shirts, where most of them come as either inexperienced or regular, you are getting 36 infantry in both kits, but with the Bersagliari, you're getting better infantry. Also, I think that there's a lot more usefulness in a autocannon than there is in a light AT gun. Sure, this army is going to struggle a little bit with anti-tank, but put it this way, your medium tank comes with a light AT, and if you have an extra light AT, it's still not enough light anti-tank anyway. Light AT is barely enough, especially when you get to the late war. So, taking two light anti-tankers isn't really going to improve your ability to deal with vehicles. I'd rather have that autocannon, which I think is much, much more flexible. And that, dear viewers, covers all of the starter armies that I recommend for beginners getting into bolt action. But of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Is there a starter army that you think is great for beginners that I didn't mention? And what do you think of the new French starter army that was recently announced by Warlord Games? Is that something that you're interested in? Of course, if you liked today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a massive thank you to bon bon vert mad larkin mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox August Vardy and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.